Um, Bartel has been one of the persons who's watched all the shows. Um, I talk to him on a regular basis in the um, EverQuest Next IRC channel. What we saw with, uh, you know, Kunark for, for EQ2, you did those 400 quests, you did all the content, and at the end of it, the world wasn't changed. Yeah, I'm Phantom Next. I uh, do social media and uh, write articles for EQ Nexus. For the fall of Bastion, um, there was a very definite, okay, this is this is where your story is going to fit into the, the world. Listen, fluffy looking bear. Thank you. Listen, <laughs> um, I went and I killed a dragon, and then two drops of whiskey hit my face, and I willed this manly beard into... <laughs> Cow was raising, yes! Hello and welcome to Evercast, uh, your uh, your premiere, uh, Everquest Next and Landmark Podcast, um, where we connect gamers with the game they play. Um, this is our 50th episode. This is the 50th time we've done this. Um, that makes it sort of a big deal. As you can see, we dress for the occasion. We're dapper as fuck. As fuck. Yeah, he had to get that in there. I am one of your hosts, I, uh, Tamlin. With me are, are three other normal uh, hosts. I'll give them an opportunity to say hi. Well, hello. Don't everybody speak at once. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. Hi, I'm Kai. If you did not already know, I am the one that has a foul mouth. Um, but with us is also Lucy, whose mind <laughs> is constantly in the gutter. So we're like... If it weren't for the gutter, my mind would be homeless. Mine too. Hi, I'm Lucy. Hi, I'm Flattis. I I don't even know where my mind is. I lost it years ago. <laughs> I know where it is. All right. Well, uh, thank you all for for joining us. Um, wow, it's been fifty uh, a year and a half and fifty of these. So good. Good. Been a good run so far. Um, we're, we're doing things differently now. I, I just want to let people know, this is completely weird for me. Um, we're doing it differently and I should not mute myself accidentally or intentionally or, or same with Kai. We, we, we think we've figured that sound problem all out, but in the process of doing this, I completely thrown myself off my game and like, I can't hear anything but my own voice for the most part. And that's new to me. So apologies. Um, so, ECAST News, I think that's up next. Yes. Um, the big one, obviously, uh, PAX East is now over. Um, we got a lot of good information that came out of PAX East uh, in gaming, for gaming in general. Uh, but obviously, none of us went, even though, Lucy, you were, you were just up the road. I was, uh... I was I was in Boston Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, but uh, my family went to PAX East without me. Thanks, guys. Wow, that that I my my parents actually I think my parents Kai, what do you think? Would my parents do like something like that to me? Not to me. <laughs> no, they like you better, of course. Maybe to you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's that's so true. If they like you better. They would have definitely invited you. Um, so, but right before PAX East, um, a bit of, uh, news, not regarding EverQuest Next or Daybreak, but, um, Omid, the former director of, what was he? Things? Brand manager. He was the senior brand manager, manager for the EverQuest franchise. That's what his title was when he was at SOE. Um, they, he made the announcement that he is no longer, um, unemployed. He's got a job. Uh, he was hired on as the director of community and social for NCSoft. Um, now, because they, there's these weird kind of umbrella, um, 
or uh, umbrella companies, um, what, whatever you want to call them. And uh, NCSoft is also uh, owns Arena.net, which is Guild Wars 2. But we, we through discussion with him, we found out that he's not going to be working on like Guild Wars 2 specifically, even though there might be some cross opportunities. Um, but Flatus, the, that's a uh, it's Wildstar and Aeon. Aeon, Aeon. Wildstar and Aeon. The, those are the two in his area, Orange County. So he will be working on Wildstar and Aeon, which is I think someone like Omid would uh, definitely, I think, would be great for that Wildstar community because I think they need someone like Omid. I, I <clears throat> a fantastic hire for them. Yeah. Uh, I'm, I haven't heard so much on Aeon, Aeon in a while, so <clears throat> that's probably needed over there too. Uh, but Wildstar's fresh, and I think that they, they changed a lot of things over there. I, I checked up some Wildstar news, like they stopped doing 40-man raids and dropped it back down to 20. There's some things moving and shifting over there to kind of bring people back into Wildstar, and I think Omid is probably one of the best gets they can get because he is such a rally for a community person, and I think that is going to behoove them uh, with their MMO, because they are still sticking strong with their uh, subscription model, so if, if, he, if he can help in any way, that's always good. Uh, right, and we're going to talk a little bit about their subscription model later on in the show, because they also have um, Cred, which is like EverQuest 2, Kronos, which is like E, Flex, and Warcraft tokens. Yep. Um, we'll talk about that a little bit later. Um, the other big news is that um, Guild Wars 2 has had out that their next expansion is coming out. Um, they, the, it's the Heart of Thorns. And yep. currently, right now, at this very second, uh, Guild Wars 2, if you don't own it, if you, uh, it's 10 bucks um, through their website. It's on sale, obviously, to get people hyped for the next expansion. Um, and if I remember correctly, Lucy, this is the this is the game that you're playing the most these days is Guild Wars 2? Yeah, I've been playing it a lot. Um, I'm going to get back into Landmark, obviously, to get all of the new outfits that they just released in the, in the latest update, obviously. But uh, Guild Wars 2 has that, just that sort of like mindless, I'm going to go do this quest and get it, like... You know, it's, it's directed. It's a theme park. You know what I mean? It's a theme park MMO. So if you're looking for directed quests and stuff like that, I and which I was just a little bit, I uh, got back into that a little bit. Uh, I've been leveling an Azura thief. Nice. Sloppy ears. It's so cute. <laughs> do, they, do their ears flop when they run? Yeah, they do. Yeah. Yeah, you'll I actually watching. made an engineer with the biggest ears possible, just so they would, they would flap around while she was like running. <laughs> Big old and flop you can ears. Backwards, and they flop even better. That's that's my. Suddenly, it does not sound like we're talking about ears anymore. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> the start of Guild Wars 2 was the, the game that I got into that, um, like, ever since then, Tamlin has been a human. When I create a character, I name it Tamlin, and it's a human. Um, and that starts with my, with my human thief in Guild Wars 2. That was the first time that I had actually created this. Um, so, Flatus. Hi. There was some Final Fantasy news at PAX East. There was a bunch of Final Fantasy news over the <laughs> over the last like couple of weeks. Uh, yeah, uh, the big news is that uh, Heaven's Word, the expansion for Final Fantasy XIV, will be dropping June twenty third. Uh, it is the the first expansion uh, for the the a Realm Reborn, the the rehash of Final Fantasy XIV. Uh, it is big news. They uh, big stuff's coming. Their flying mounts are coming. Dragons. Uh, the Heaven's Word expansion is up in uh, the Holy Sea of Ishgard is the main city, and it's uh, involving the seven dragons. A uh, little lore there for you folks, and we're going to be fighting those seven dragons, and I'm kind of excited because uh, I'm a big Final Fantasy nerd, and there's a lot of lore going on there. And uh, not only this time, the world is more expansive, even though it's one giant continent. This is a new area that we get to explore. Um, and as always, they have three new classes, the, the, the uh, Dark Knight, the Machinist, and the uh, Astrologian. Astrologian being a tarot card, card healer with two different stances, the Machinist being a gun class with a uh, turret that can fly or do ground, or you can do different things with the turret, and then the uh, Dark Knight is a magic-using tank with a right. two-handed sword. 
And it's <laughs> it's funny that they call it a, a Dark Knight because Pantheon when or yeah Pantheon they, like they got you know hey this is this is our Dark Knight class and they got you know some pretty heavy flack for that because of you know the obvious Batman reference. Um, yeah, well, it it you know Final Fantasy's been doing Dark Knights since Final Fantasy oh, two two. So it's in their lore. It's in their wheelhouse for Dark Knights. Oh, is it? Because I, I yeah. Don't... Okay. All right. Yeah. Maybe they'll get a pass on that. <laughs> yeah. Actually, how he kind of Yoshi P or Yoshida, not not Yoshida, the producer for Final Fantasy, during the Final Fantasy Fan Fest in Vegas, how he hinted at the new class was that he wore a Batman shirt. <laughs> oh, sweet. <laughs> and he's like, man, I really love the Dark Knight. <laughs> And everybody's like, oh. That's cool. I just remember yeah. like playing the first Final Fantasy where your warrior like gets upgraded into a knight and your martial artist upgraded oh, yeah. into a ninja. Yep. But I don't remember Dark Knight in the original one, but I've only played 1 and 7. 1 and 7 are both good. Two, 6 is really good. 3 is fantastic. So uh, they're all good, really. Eight. Some people don't like 8. 10... I can tend the mechanics were re- the fighting mechanics were really good, but Titus looked like Meg Ryan, so that's <laughs> take that or leave that one. What's wrong with looking like Meg Ryan? I named him Meg Ryan, so every time there was a cutscene, it kept saying Meg Ryan, and he would say his lines. It was really funny. Uh, um, oh, right. also uh, one more thing: they hit four million uh, uh, player four base. Million. So, so the the death of the MMO genre might be you know overrated or really yeah. greatly or, exaggerated. Yeah, and then the subscription model too, because Final Fantasy fourteen is a subscription model. So and we will definitely talk about that too, because Final Fantasy fourteen it, it might be the the last holdout, right? Because they're like a you buy the extract, buy the subscription, and you buy the game, and that's that's how they do it. Yep. And they're expanding their uh, their set too. So not only are they on PlayStation Three, PlayStation Four, PC, but coming June twenty third, they will be they will have a full fledged Mac client. So they are across the board one of the largest like offering in MMOs. And if they can somehow figure out to get to a tablet, then some games are in a lot of trouble. Wow, that would be awesome to see an MMO play on a tablet. Yeah. Oh, because you can uh, play the game with a controller, so if they can figure out to get the technology or stream it to a tablet, it would be interesting. All right. Um, so that was our non-daybreak uh, slash EverQuest Next uh, news. We have a couple of EverCast news items for um, daybreak games. Um, in the last episode where we showed the, I, and now you get to make fun of me for saying this word again, the iconography for, for Kinos, um, I showed the picture, showed the images for their icon and said that the flares that are on the icon represent the eight. And I heard that and I assumed that they meant the eight races of the combine. Uh, somebody else heard that and they interpreted it as the eight races, or excuse me, not the eight races, but they thought that the eight gods. Um, so I, 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 I found the audio that I heard and I'm going to play it for everybody real quick. And so that you can hear what I heard um, and get an idea of, you know, what you think. Is it the eight races or the eight gods? A lot of um, Kinos iconography in this. Like we have, uh, we have the Kinos Claymore there mm-hmm, in the mm-hmm. uh, Which I as think a centerpiece in many yeah, of these. That's probably a good, simple <laughs> yeah. um, design for like something that is going to be right in the middle of town or for on sure. the side of the yeah. city walls. And then you, you have the... Kinos uh, gatehouse there as part of it, and then we've got sort of the flare filigree on the end there, which represents the eight. Um, this here, yeah. And then that's yeah. That. So it's sort of a, it's a com it's a combination between the old Kinos um, banner symbol, all right, and which is um, that, the gatehouse. I'll come back. So that's just a little bit. Um, I've asked for clarification, and once we get clarification on what they actually meant by the eight, um. I'll let you guys know. That's... Chat, chat's trying to figure it out too. <laughs> yeah, hey, we, we, we all hear things, right? And we all interpret them in different ways. And we all accept that what we heard is the fact because it just, like when I heard it, it was just so obvious. Oh, eight flares, eight races, bam. It's in, their, in my mind as a fact. But 
uh, I, people can can hear it and and interpret it totally different, and that's you know we'll we'll get clarification. Um, so the next bit of daybreak, a little bit of a um, controversy, controversial decision that they made, um, and I I'll link it from EQ2 Wire. Um, and that's the, the basically Daybreak in EverQuest 2 and EverQuest 1, they, they drastically reduced the number of customer services that they are offering through their guides. Um, and it's, it's, I wouldn't say that they're silly things, because they're important to the players, but it's kind of like that I accidentally deleted something, can somebody, it, you know, give it back to me because or I bought the wrong thing and can can you take this from me and give me back my currency or whatever uh, because it's you know it's those little sort of things um, that that are you know what do you call them quality of life issues they just make the game a little bit easier to play and daybreak is like we had to you know we cut down our customer service branch so this is like uh, you know life is not fair and life can sometimes be tough and you're just going to have to to, Deal to roll with it. With it. Yeah, they were kind of the responses. You know, well, you can just roll a new character. I was like, well, what if, you know, not to say, but let's say if I was a player that didn't have money, I was a teenager, someone living at home, and my my little brother or sister comes up, and you know, they're they're not at the young point of age where they're just slapping the keyboard, but you know, like I'm gonna pick on my older brother because he gave me wedgie the other day and deletes a character, and you're you're stuck. You're you gotta, you know. Yeah. Um. My only take on that is that a lot of times it's that, that this to me seems like a, a system that can be automated. Um, and I, I don't like always using the WoW comparison, but I, in this case, it definitely fits that in Blizzard right now, in, if you accidentally delete something or disenchant it or sell it and can't get it back, the, the, per, the process to get that item back, it's all automated. You, you fill out a su support ticket and they, they show you the items that you can claim uh, back. Um, and this is through their website, not through the in-game. And then, like, two days later, bam, you've got it back. Um, so hopefully, like, the, maybe that is one of those considerations that Daybreak is making. Is like, hey, in our customer service branch, we have too many hours being spent doing these type of things. Um, why don't we, because we're computer programmers, um, why don't we create a program to automate that for us? Because it's really super easy to do. I agree with you. It's the same thing like we talked about when uh, the whole Columbus Nova uh, buyout kind of took place. Like, we kind of want, uh, we, you, Tan and I are both in agreement where we kind of want to see them come out of 2003 and come to about the year, at least the year 2013, 2014, yeah. and have like a launcher, have uh, the ability to download a mobile authenticator, um, things like that, like stuff like, I, you know, quality of life things. So, right. And I, and I was also just looking at the, the list of services that they back down on that are easily automated. Like in Warcraft, if your guild leader does not log on for 30 days, it doesn't mean you have to all leave the guild and, and disband it and inform and start a new one. You just wait 30 days. If the guild leader hasn't logged on in that period of time, anybody in the guild can claim it. Mm -hmm. And so it's like, okay, 30 days, somebody claim it. Um, and so you don't necessarily need to have customer service intervening on your behalf to get these things done. If you have an absent guild leader, you can automate it. Yep. We totally skipped something for ecast news that we're gonna have to go back to. <laughs> <laughs> Rewind. <laughs> well, I said that we were done talking about all the non SOE things, but Lucy, you were gonna say? Um, I just hope that the services are still available, automated or not, because I know that there have been a couple times when I you know, either had somebody drain my guild bank, like somebody's account got hacked in my guild in World of Warcraft, and I had to go and talk to customer service and get the stuff back and stuff like that. And, and like, it's not like that we couldn't have rebuilt it, because we could have. We were a tiny guild. It's not like we had much. But it was really nice to have that, like, have the company be like, no, we got your back. We understand it happens. You know, I, I want that got your back sort of service to still be there automated or not i want it there right unfortunately your camera froze at a bad <laughs> <laughs> i am so sorry oh no <laughs> uh, 
I making a stupid face? <laughs> you're making like the like you're getting ready for, the, for uh, that wooden stick to ready get for stuck your in your mouth. Uh, yeah, <laughs> well, it looks almost like you're about to bust out a high note. I'm gonna lie. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, so Lucy will be right back with us. Um, Is this better? <laughs> yeah. Not yet. No, am I still fizz in? Yeah. Okay. There um, we go. Uh oh. <laughs> fix it. It it's fixed. It's fixed. <laughs> Y'all got your screenshots, guys. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Whatever. Um, you're 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 absolutely right. I think that like um that that like cutting back on those services, I I really don't feel comfortable with them and totally eliminating them. I hope that cutting back in them at this point simply means that they're moving towards an automated process for the future. Um, we'll, we'll just have to see because right now, like I I linked the article and it says like. And it, but it also says like the guide thing, so I don't know who actually can still continue to. Do it. Yeah, they they're definitely taking the tough love approach. Like you lost this or that for whatever reason. It you know sorry. Um, the bit of news that came out of Pax East that we skipped over uh, was the two new characters and Overwatch. Ah, uh, yeah. How do we skip that? <laughs> I know we've been so excited to talk about this ever since we saw the, the <laughs> but like both of those characters because both those characters look really um, interesting for for completely different reasons. Um, for those that that aren't following along, uh, Overwatch is Blizzard's. What would you call it? It's kind of like a a first person shooter. Um, and we won't go into too much depth. It's a first-person shooter that Blizzard's putting out. It's going to go into beta sometime this year, and they're looking at a launch sometime early next year. That's not the important thing, at least in my in my opinion. Um, we have seen two of their new characters, and I'm going to pull up one of the characters, and, and everybody tell me, does this character look familiar to you? Oh! Uh, the the first one is the um, the gunslinger look for for my co-hosts who may not be seeing it at this very moment. Um, I, I've seen it, so obviously I can't comment. we found out with my with my video freezing that Lucy's bandwidth is not all that awesome, and she can't stream the show and watch the show at the same time. And <laughs> she gives her videos, so uh, it, it looks exactly. <laughs> Are you sure it's you stream? What else you got going on down? You download something? <laughs> I don't know, but you it know. might also... Lucy's, Lucy's, Lucy's playing... Something. You never know. Um, Lucy's, Lucy's playing Guild Wars 2. <laughs> I could totally see her doing it that. It might also be my bandwidth, because Kai's um, video now all of a sudden got super fuzzy. Yeah, I blame you, Tamlin. What are you guys doing over there? Downloading anything? <laughs> I'm not downloading anything. tell you about... Yeah. Right. <laughs> um, so we showed the first character. It, it, it um, Flattis thought that it looked like um, Clint Eastwood. I think that it looks like the gunslinger outfit that they put into Landmark. That was what I was going for. Um, well, that does look very Clint Eastwood. It, true. True. <laughs> it does. I know. Jaiman twenty two is like he looks nothing like Clint Eastwood either. Yes, he does. We get out of. <laughs> Yes, he does. Looks a lot like Clint Eastwood. Clint Eastwood, Eastwood, or he looks like the main protagonist in uh, was it Red Dead Revolver, uh, that um, Western um, game from <sighs> Rockstar. It's kind of like yeah, GTA in the yeah. West. Look. All right, and then the other character that we have uh, that they released, um, Daria. Is that how I don't A R Y A? Um, Saria. Yeah, yeah, it's, 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 which is shortened from Zari Jovanovich. <laughs> She's Russian. I listen. He's Russian. Like, I think the first day you messaged me, they're like, "Flatus, what do you think of her?" I'm like, "That I, I would marry her." <laughs> and I'll well, I, and and Kylust and I definitely talked about a little bit about it because one of the things that we've been we we've taken game developers to task. We've been like, um, "You need to make more uh, female body options available." You know, we're not saying that there's anything wrong with the models that you have, but but let's let's 
have more diversity in in what you have. And so I think that again, this is a good step first step forward. I'm gonna throw it back up. Um, okay, so I googled image searched it so I can know what you guys are talking about. <laughs> that is one badass chick. Do not right? fuck with her. What Do is not fuck with yeah. her. Because she will literally take your head in her hand and twist it until it pops off like a dandelion. Uh, I would not want to step in the ring, the octagon, uh, uh, square, or other ring with that lady. She looks like she would beat my head. She face. could put me in any submissive lock she wants. <laughs> any one of them. I, like Can you... I think she's awesome. I like her pink hair. Oh, yeah. Sure. <laughs> um, and again, I, like I, I, we're not saying that there's anything wrong with the other body models for females that game developers have put out. What are things? Give us more options. Let us see more. Um, so that's really cool. Because remember, it's not just dudes that are playing these games, and sometimes dudes want to play a badass chick too. It's not just girls who want options. It's guys who want options too. I think that's where they're going to get their step up in the Team Fortress Two. Because clear, because oh, for those of you who don't know what Overwatch is or just haven't paid attention to, Overwatch is a team-based shooter with two set sides of teams, and it's much akin to what we would look like look at uh, Team Fortress Two, um, where Team Fortress Two is all men characters. Still a great game, great art style, holds up to this day for being such an old game, but uh, you know they ain't got no female characters, so uh... <laughs> right, right, and <laughs> GG. <laughs> In other in other representation, Overwatch also has a what what is it a teddy bear and a robot? It um, has no, it's a, a gorilla. It's a gorilla, not a teddy bear. Okay. A gorilla. Yeah, they have a gorilla wearing sunglasses and a robot. <laughs> right. right. So, yeah. Um, all right. So I, yeah, we we skipped over that one. And we definitely thought that it was worth coming back to. Um, I think that's it for Ecast News. That's that was quite a bit to talk about, but obviously because PAX is just ending, there was going to be a little bit to talk about. It's good stuff. All good stuff. But it's a big year for gaming. 2015 is a big year. We got the VR, the <laughs> VR Steam systems yeah. coming out. VR systems. When, we will talk about VR when we have more news, like like more crunchy news to to bite into. Because right now it's a lot of like there's a lot of a lot of companies that are developing their own virtual head virtual reality headsets all at the same time and that's great that they're working on the product but we okay well what's the experience going to be like w once we know more about that we're definitely like ecast yeah. is going to do evercast is going to do a show on that yeah not and a little tidbit sony says morpheus would be ready to launch in 2016 so oh uh -huh. very cool yep all right so the other major news that came out actually before um, PAX East that's like the, the oh my goodness, you have got to read this. Um, it's kind of like a blog post, right? Press release blog post. Uh, but it's about Storybricks. Um, I'm going to link it here in the channel in just a second. Um, but this is huge. This, uh, this blog post is... Um, pretty revealing about what was going on behind the straight scenes um, leading up to the Columbus Nova um, acquisition of Daybreaks from Sony. Um, it also, unfortunately, is basically they say that this is their, their last story bricks blog post um, because they're um, basically shutting down the, the company. Um, so yeah, um, the major news to come out of it, I think it was on the last episode that we had talked about, is that somebody asked us about the AI in um, EverQuest Next. And I said, like, like, when you're working on a job, right, and you invent something really cool, there's that gray area of the law on who owns it. Most, when I, I've had to sign agreements in places I've worked before where no matter what I designed or developed while I was on the clock, they owned it so that I couldn't just, like, Quit my job, patent it, and then sell it to them, or threaten to sell it to a competitor. So, so my my main concern with with Storybricks was that okay, they're not working with with Daybreak on EverQuest Next, but who owns the AI that they had been working on? Because if that was owned by Storybricks and they're not working with with Daybreak anymore, there's a chance that they were like, okay, we're, this is our AI, and we're going elsewhere with it. 
now we know uh, because the the blog post that I just linked it made it perfectly clear that, that Daybreak is a co-owner of that AI. So so that there that that fear about what the AI in EverQuest Next is going to be like that's totally alleviated because Daybreak owns part of that. Uh, and, and when I say co-owns it, it doesn't mean like oh I own this piece and I own this piece. Um, in a legal sense, it's more like I own fifty percent of it, you own fifty percent of it. So we we own the whole thing just in different shares type thing because it wouldn't make sense to do it any other way. Um, so with that with that announcement, with that news in the blog post, I feel very comfortable with where the the EverQuest Next AI is at. I, I agree. No, no, I agree with you. I think um, I, I think it's the one the read was completely interesting. I think it was interesting that Storybricks is going to buy or, the, or uh, at least attempted to buy. That uh, was the other bit, yeah. Yeah, um, it, knowing that the the everything they worked on with SOE slash Daybreak now Daybreak is with Daybreak still. Like they 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 address that in their goodbye blog. Um, that it is something that I think a lot of us kind of feared a little bit, because especially when Terry oh, yeah. said, oh, we, we were doing it in-house, but it mostly was, we're doing it in-house, but we still have the technology that was supplied to us already, or everything we've worked on is still here. So I think that'll re alleviate a lot of the emergent AI questions or a lot of the, are they still using Storybricks? Yes. Is it going to be called Storybricks? No, probably not. Yeah, no, but is it still sort of <laughs> Did anybody? Did anybody see the tweet from Pentapod? She responded to somebody who did the Triforce, and I don't remember who it was, so I'm sorry that I can't give you credit. But they did the Triforce logo, and they had like Sony and like Storybricks and and the Voxel Farm. Um, the, and, all, all, all the, and they're like, ah, oh, it makes a hole. And she's like, and Pentabot was like, um, actually, those are just companies that we hire, and you shouldn't think of them as like part of it. And like when I read that, I was like, something's up. Like immediately in my brain, I was like, what is happening here? Yeah. And then it, obviously, it wasn't until a week later that we realized that one, they became Daybreak Games. And then a week later, two story bricks done. So it was kind of like a it was like a foreshadowing sort of thing. I don't know if Pentapod uh, meant it that way, but I kind of picked up on it. I was like, why is she clarifying up. that? Yeah. But I for, for where you know over what has happened over the last couple of weeks with um with Daybreaks and SOE and Columbus Nova, I think the game is still like, I have not like gone like the sky is falling mode. Um, the closest thing that would have done that to me is when Storybricks said that they weren't working with with uh, Daybreak anymore. But now that I've read that blog post, I feel better about where the AI is, and that like their 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 four pillars of the game. It, uh, that was the one I was worried the most about, and it still sounds like it's in place. So all good things considering what has been going on. He, um, he has to gone. The sky is falling just like, a little no, bit. That whole afternoon, because and that was because I was at work and I was reliving Vanguard all over again. <laughs> it's just it's a little, little moment, a little flashback really moment. Right. So, um, a couple other things that come out of that blog post is that um, we had mentioned Story Bricks was trying to buy. Um, uh, SOE away from from Sony, and that confirms something else that we'd also heard um, is that that SOE had been up for sale for quite a long period of time. That 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 the the you know the the management at, at SOE understood that being part of Sony was actually hindering their development because it was keeping them off of the Xbox platform. And like they talked a little bit about mobile markets, a little bit it's like these are all places that they would like to expand into, but they just have it and and maybe well they definitely weren't able to get on the Xbox and now they can so that's a huge step forward. Um, so one of the things that Storybrooke said that they would do if they had actually been able to purchase is they might have made even more severe cuts um, to the staff. Um, and that's like wow. Um, 
the, they, they, I mean, now that they're, they're, they're upfront about it, um, I, I'll have to ask you guys, in the states that you work in, uh, do, do companies have to report to the state if they, if they shut down X amount of, uh, of jobs? In, you know? I don't know. Yeah, well, I don't well, know look. if it's a, a federal law or a state law. I do know that in Washington and California, if you lay off more than a certain number of employees, you have to report it to the state. And so, obviously, when if things are reported to the state, you can submit a Freedom of Information Act uh, request to the federal or state government, and you can get those numbers. And that's, uh, I mean, it's pretty obvious that that's what someone did because they got the uh, the concrete number of positions that were laid off from Storybrooks, or not from Storybrooks, and that was 140 people. I didn't think they still had 140 people working there, to be honest, but that's like... Wow, um, they they really took it on the chin on that one. I I, I can probably say for my company that I used to work for when they did the major cuts. I think they did them staggered in a sense. Also, like sometimes they even though there was cuts, we don't know for sure that oh you know how many people took. A package instead of saying like oh we'll let you go because sometimes they offer packages to people yeah. and saying like if you're willing to leave on your own accord here's money here's this bundle that that you know here's all your vacation time plus whatever and sometimes that way they can get away with not having to say well bye versus right are you, are you willing to leave i guarantee some people are like i i, I can see maybe like certain people that didn't leave maybe the first day or some people that made the choice like Matt Higby who left the second day he was like maybe he took a package maybe he was like you know I'm done here I did everything I could personally I want to see my career into something else I, I think I'd put enough into Planet Side 2 and I want to see it grow into something else and maybe I just can't be here any longer and I want to jump on a new train and see a new game and it, it's totally possible so you mentioned something about Higby leaving and I wanted to to, to to bring that up a little bit more, um, my first job out of the military, right, I was working in a warehouse that had a sales staff, and we had both an internal sales staff and an external sales staff, and, and I, I promise you, it'll make sense here in a minute. Um, the external sales staff, the door-to-door the, the -door salesman that went to all of these different companies to try to sell our product to them, um, we were also going through like a bit of restructuring while I was working there. And one of the things that the company president did was he said that um, you're, you're not going to be on commission anymore. And, you'll be, and the reason why is because your job as, an, as a salesperson is to knock down doors, to get in and, and to make new clients. Once you've made the new clients, we don't want to pay you based on the work that you've already done. We want to, we're going to turn that over to our inside sales staff. Their job is to maintain the customers once you've created the new clients, right? And so I was thinking with, with Higby leaving is that like in a certain respect that like there, once you've got the game created and, and Dave Georgeson mentioned something like that in his article, like there's creating a world, creating a game, and then there's maintaining mm -hmm. a game and expanding a game. And I think that, that, that's one of the, that must be one of the toughest parts of being a game programmer is that once you've created a game, maybe that's what you're good at. And maybe after a, a certain amount of time, you feel like, hey, you know what? I've created this world. I don't, I'm, not, I'm not feeling as good about maintaining it as I would be if I was creating something new somewhere else. Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, I mean, totally. I, why not? Like, that's, it's kind of like, at least in the the gaming world where it's a volatile market, sometimes it's good. I mean, l l let's take um, someone not even in the Daybreak universe. Let's take uh, uh, the Daybreak universe. Yeah. Um. Uh, what's his name? He did Gears of War and uh, somebody in chat. Quick, when it catches up, give me his name. Pardon. Uh, I'm trying to think of his name and I can't remember his name. And it sucks. I see him all the time in my Twitter feed beating. All the time. Uh, I, I missed that. He he did Gears of War. He did uh, Unreal oh, Tournament. Um, Cliffy B. Thank you, Jace three hundred five. Cliffy B. Uh, or Cliff Belinsky. Uh, he uh, he left uh, um, his company 
after he created Gears of War, he just felt done. He was like, I, I want to move on to something else. Gears of War, you know, isn't my passion. I did it, and he, he's going oh, back. I, I do remember the, that now, him tweeting yeah. about that. He's like, yeah. I have been part... And there's a lot of actual uh, of developers who run into that, right? Like, I have been working on this specific um, this game or, this, the, or games in this universe for so long, I feel like it's time to... to take a step back and re-examine what opportunities and see if I can come up with, you know, designing something else. And I, I, I totally, you know, whatever keeps people passionate. And like I said, Dave G, Dave Georgeson talked a little bit about that. Um, yeah, it's it's about like if you're great at creating games, which Cliffy B is. I mean, he created. I mean, he's been in the gaming, you know. He's been in the gaming since a very young age. Like he, I think, what early he was eighteen, nineteen when he started, and and now he's still like probably later thirties. Very young, very like he, he his his thing is creating content, creating new games. That's where he shines. Um, and so it's it's nice to see him. You know, it's nice to know that people sometimes people just want to get out there and try new things. Like I think one of the first things Dave Jordan said, he's like. This gives me a chance to try something new. Maybe go into the VR market or try to something there. Right. And so, from my one, oh, I'm sorry. Go on. No, no. Go ahead. I had nothing else. Um, from my one, um, I met uh, Jeff Butler in person uh, once. Uh, one opportunity to to meet him in person, and I I think that that's where his. his I, I mean, I think that he's that type of guy, right? Like he'll go and create a world and create the design documents and and everything. And so, like as as much as it must suck to get let off your job, like I hope that he's already like on the phone and writing stuff down and 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 brainstorming ideas um, to what he wants to do next. Because I, whatever he ends up doing, like I'm sure he he just has that knack. Um, so it'll be interesting to see where where Jeff Butler ends up. Simply because I, I, I look at him and I can hear his creativity and his passion. And he's not, you know, he was not dead weight. <laughs> he was not, you know, they might might say like, hey, we have to cut back. But he, I mean, stuff, but he's, he was good at what he was doing. Absolutely. I, and we, I think we could say that about all the people that uh, left rather voluntarily or were let go. Uh, that they were great at what they did uh, in, in every department. EQ, EQ2 uh eqn uh h1z1 was kind of i don't think anybody from i think maybe one person from h1z1 was let go but i don't think there, there was yeah it like was i think one, i think they're two yeah um and h1z1 and and uh planet side 2 and and the whole team and everybody else uh, community members and all that stuff like your community managers and stuff like well, i feel for all of them and they were all really good at what they did uh, brass is fantastic at her job she went to gdc she got to play with hololens she can't really say much about it but she was like <laughs> it's the future i know she had a bunch of uh interviews at gdc so i i hope the best for her and i want to see her move on to great things like we used to be talked about omid earlier omid moving on to nc soft i think i think it's a great you know some people's stories end at certain places and they move on and it's good especially the gaming community because you want to see where they go next and see what they can do with whatever they're going to do next you know we could see dave jordson open up his own little indie company and start making some minor vr things and move on from there we never know uh, all right um Got about like ten minutes, uh, fifteen minutes before break. Um, so one of the things that, like, uh, if you watch uh, Landmark, Landmark, Landmark Live, as I trip over my words, um, Landmark Live, um, Terry was with like, if it's not done by Friday, you know, we're supposed to call him out. But he did; he got it done, and that is the um, the updated blueprint. Uh, if you go to the forums, uh, the Landmark forums, they've updated the blueprint. Uh, Lucy and I were talking about it. We were pretty sure that this is the, the the road to open beta, which will be end of next month, early May, right? Yeah. Definitely, because they said that there was only going to be one more wipe, and it was open beta. And they also said that there's going to be the wipe when they do the uh, new large humans and the new biomes. So. Right, and that's uh, they showed. Um, the, the props for the new biomes are in now, like the, the, the gorgeous, it, right? The fall and autumn uh, trees are in the game. Uh, deciduous. Uh, the, Come try yep. this deciduous. 
Um, and and uh, then the biomes is co- the biomes are coming with the next wipe. Well, with the wipe, and the wipe will lead into open beta. So we're like, it's it's right around the corner. Um, pretty exciting. Yeah, I uh, forgot to send chat. He said on Twitter they will not do an open beta wipe while a workshop is going on. But after workshop, and right, right. Which would you know what? We are in the middle of the Kinos build. Um, Kinos build and the Kinos workshop during you know sometime late April. <laughs> Hold off on doing the new workshop and then wipe the servers and start everything up again um, in an open beta and announce the next workshop. That sounds like a you know like a pretty good time frame if I was messing around with things. Give it a week just to roll out any like major bugs that may hinder the game. <laughs> Always. 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 Always, yeah. Yeah. But... We... Calls it like I sees it. <laughs> oh, all right, I'm gonna try and find that that link for the updated blueprint. Open beta next month if all goes well. Like I, end of April. Uh, Dig saying end of Eek. April is way too soon. I, I, I don't know. I think that they want to get to open beta. I, I think that they're going to get end of. I think maybe not end of April, but I'm thinking like maybe early May. They'll finish up workshop. They'll get everything loaded, loaded up. Op- go open beta early May, and then launch a new workshop. <laughs> But, and see, that, that's the thing is that that like you say that that the end of April is too soon, but like they have a to be determined update th- that is likely to happen on March 18th or the 25th, right? And then their update number two is aiming for two to three weeks after that first update. So that's middle of April. And that's always yeah. subject, subject to change too. But, so right, and I'm always like I'm always willing to to play accordion with the, the dates and stretch them out a little bit. So that's why I'm saying, like, we should see it late April, early May. Um, and that should, and again, we're going to see a couple of whites during that time because they, they said that they have to to introduce the new biomes and the character models, and then bam, we're, we're there. We'll see, guys. We don't, we'll see what they do. We'll see. I mean, they could flip the script on us at any minute. <laughs> True, true. Um, they, again, this is a, a blueprint, not a, you know, <laughs> solid carbon stone do or do not a type thing. It's like, well, we'd like, we'd like to have these things done and, and these things done and this worked on and then we're ready for open beta. So they, of course, can be like, oh, hey, you know what? We, we discovered something. We found something that was missing and we can't go until open beta until it is done. And then they push it back for a couple more weeks. So what else do we got? That that's not just the large humans um, combat iterations, and we might have to take a look back about what changes that they're proposing for the combat iterations, because they mentioned that their their combat iterations are changing. Um, I myself am super looking forward to the crafting console. Is, you know, seeing what they do with the crafting, um, and then yeah, because we haven't even seen altars yet. No altars yet. Um, and then let's see, what else have they talked about that we haven't seen in the game yet? Um, they, they, they talked in Landmark Live that they were going to add more achievements. And I, you know, in the achievement for them, I am definitely, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. I'll be logging into Landmark as soon as there's more to get and get those. Um, and then the claim vendors, which is something that like a, a crafter type person such as myself has been asking to, for for the longest time. Because like I've, I've finally given up building for like the third or fourth time, maybe fifth. And so like paying the upkeep to keep my claim makes no sense to me if I'm not building anything on it. But if I had to maintain my claim to keep my claim vendor up, there we go. Now I'm logging in on a regular basis, I'm not necessarily building anything, but just to keep my vendor there and see what people want and what I can make that are inter- is interesting to people. Uh, real quick, uh, digs digs in chat saying launching with five mobs is a disaster. <laughs> tell tell them. 
<laughs> uh -oh. That depends on whether or not the combat iterations include more AI. That's true. Like, if, if those monsters start hunting in packs, we're in trouble. Well, when Minecraft launched, how many different monsters were there? Uh... I can only think of four off the top of my head. Zombie. Z zombie, skeleton. Creeper. Spider. Creeper. That was the four main on the land. Then in the uh, nether, uh, there were the zombie pigmen, the uh, the dark skeletons, I guess, uh, and the... Uh, wither. The wither, yeah. The with the wither. <clears throat> yeah. Woo! The, like, the, little <laughs> the thing that shot fireballs and cried. <gasps> um, um, the ghast. The ghast, yeah, the ghast. Uh, I never played Minecraft. That's so it. it didn't have a lot though, because some of them were technically reskins. Like the zombie pigmen were just zombies with the reskin. Right. So, I, mean, I, think, I think from a true MMO point of view, like yeah, you you definitely need more than five types of monsters. But from a but again, landmark is more of about building. Uh, it doesn't even have like a true survivor mode. It's just kind of like a building game with some extra stuff attached to it at the moment. And we all know that it's going to be expanded from there. But I don't think that. Well, the last time I logged in was looking for a fight to go around and kill stuff. There simply just wasn't enough mobs for me to go running around killing. Okay. Now, Diggs is saying also in chat, five mobs are not going to keep EQ or WoW players playing Landmark. It's not th that game. That I was it, just thinking the same thing. It, yeah, it's true. It's, it's not that game. At EQN is that game. EverQuest Next is the game that WoW players are going to go play or EQ players are going to go play. Landmark is the... EQ version of Minecraft, and I only expect maybe at most ten mobs. Like you have the oh no, there's wisps. What else is there? The the golems, Wisp, chompers, abominations, and the slugs. Ooh, ah. Yeah. <laughs> slugs. Slugs. I think it's four. Yeah. But there's like different skins of them for each biome. So. Um. Yeah, it, 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 I, 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 no, it's it digs. It's not that game. Landmark it's still, is not that game. It's, they they want to be. For, it's for creation. Like it's putting content creation in the hands of players and giving you the chance to entertain yourself. So, so Pathfinder, Pathfinder, when when Pathfinder was was they they funded through their Kickstarter and their developer came up with this blog post and he put it out to the news. Um, the, this you know, as a press release to these news organizations and uh, to, to basically repost it. And he's talking, he called it the MVP, which is the minimum viable product. And for, and he's like, Pathfinder is going to launch when we feel we have an MVP, like a minimally viable product. Like what features does it need to be minimally viable? And that's the, where I think that Daybreak is looking at with, with um, Landmark. It's like, what is the minimum we need to have in the game for it to be viable? And for me, it doesn't need a, a, a huge, incredible bestiary, uh, bestiary of, of mobs to go run around and kill. It doesn't need all of that. Um, it needs to have good, solid, and easy to use building tools. And as they go through, they can add all of that extra stuff to it. But at it, the very bare minimum, that's what you need. Diggs, I disagree. <laughs> we disagree fundamentally. I, I unfortunately disagree. I mean, it is and it isn't. Like it, it's one of the, it's like kind of like Minecraft. Minecraft is and is not that game. Minecraft is a game for like if I just want to go in there and build something, I can do that. And if I want to do something for myself, but then there's people that build my, map packs and do that stuff. Right, and, and that reminded me back of what um, Storybricks um, had mentioned during their press releases. They said that if they had gotten a hold of 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 SOE, if they've been able to purchase it from Sony, they one of the things that they had considered is allowing players to host their own servers, and and that's like when we're when we're talking about like is that the game for the WoW community or the EverQuest community? There was a bit of debate going on um, with some of the other people that I know that play EverQuest. I'm like, sure, go ahead, give it to them. It's it's no different than, than them having access to Project 99, but them paying you for the, the right to be able to do it so that it's got that whole legality to it. And somebody else said that, like, no, EverQuest and, and could argue other MMOs are about, like, that whole server in integrity type thing. 
Yeah, it's... And, and that's... Sorry, to exp- I, I, I realized that I didn't clarify my point. My point being that the fundamental difference between what, what um, Minecraft is compared to what a traditional MMORPG is, is that ability to host and run your own server, which is something that is very unique to Minecraft, um, and other games are kind of looking at that. And Storybricks was looking at doing that for, for they didn't say which games, but you would just assume all of the games that they, they would then uh, acquire. Yeah, it, it, here's a fun tidbit. If you go back to EQ2 Talk, and we've had Delmon on the on the show, and I don't think Delmon's in chat tonight. He may be doing a raid or something like that tonight. Uh, or he may be at PAX. We don't know. Uh, but if you go back to... I, and I can't... I'm sorry, I can't give you the, the exact episode, and I will try to find it and maybe tweet it out tomorrow. Um, or during this week, I'll have to go back and listen. But there is an interview he did with Dave Jorson. This is way before EQN. Uh, but he was Dave Jorson was talking about Minecraft and how he played Minecraft. He was like, that was the, he's like, that's the future of gaming. And uh, very interesting that later in life, later, maybe a year later, uh, that EQN Landmark are announced. I, I, I agree with you, Diggs, that Landmark isn't Minecraft, but at the same time, you know... It is a building game with these mobs integrated into it, um, and they don't. I mean, they're going to go to open beta soon. They're they they just are. They're they're not they're not not going to go to open beta. Not like they're not going to wait a year because they've already said like they were on the road to open beta. They they were on the road to open beta. I can see open beta even if it's pushed back to June. I think they're going to release it with five mobs. Now I agree with you. What they could do to spice it up, and I would think that would be a smart idea, is take some of the mobs you already have, make them bigger, increase their size, make them boss mobs, have them randomly spawn in the world, have them drop the things that you can't get, or have them increase certain things, make it a group effort to kill those things, and that would spice up the game. Make them a different color. They don't. Ha- you can use the five different or mobs. Give me the mobs. I'll make dungeons. Yeah, or just give them, give us the mobs. But we don't know. That may be coming with the the combat stuff. That that stuff may be coming with the combat. We just don't know yet. And until they say like this is what it is, I just think that they are pushing for open beta because they have a smaller team now and they need to get their asses on EQN. And this is not this isn't like well we have all this extra. We have Dave and they don't have Dave anymore. They don't have a lot of the people. They don't have Jeff. They don't have all like so now they're working with not I'm not saying they, they still have the biggest team, but they, they have a the bigger team, but I think now they have a time crunch. And I think without them saying that they have a time crunch, I think they have a time crunch. I don't think they have the same time frame that they used to. They still have the same pillars, they still have the same dream. They may just have a smaller time set to do it all in. So we may not see more than five mobs right now. And that's I'm okay with that because Landmark is not my game. EQN is my game. Landmark is not a bad game, and it's not Minecraft, but I think Landmark going into open beta is good. It's going to let more people in. It's going to let people in that signed up for open beta and let them build and play with the tools, and we're going to get people that have not done workshops yet that, that work these tools and get into them. And I think that's a great thing. So, you know, I don't want to go over, but like I think it's a good thing going to open beta. It's like it may not be for you, Digs, and it may not be for some others, but I think it's a good thing to let new players into with these tools that may have not had access yet or may not have had the money to drop on this yet. And let them come in and play. You don't have to be a voxel mancer to build. That's you stopping yourself from building because you don't think you're good enough. You can. I, I'm, I'm not, living proof that you can build something and people I'm can not have fun. Good enough. <laughs> uh, oh no! Listen, we don't, listen. Sorry, I hate we to could, disagree with her, but we 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 could be. <laughs> I could I could tell you about the mud shack incident of, of <laughs> 2014. Well, no, no. I and again, like I I have no problem like going and building and doing the, the limited thing that I can do. But like I I got it to a point where I was somewhat happy with it, but um. And that's where the maintenance game got to me, like having to log in to maintain it. It just didn't like I didn't feel comfortable maintaining it just for the sake of maintaining it. But once I have my my claim vendors on there, I would like to be able to maintain it a little bit longer. And then like 
the crafting part of it and the achievement part of it. Like I, I will be continuing to log into landmarks for those sort of things because that's what they've already said that this is their test bed. Well, they didn't say test bed for EverQuest Next, but the systems in, in Landmark are going into EverQuest Next, and I want to be an expert of them before the game is launched so that I, I have that. All right. Listen, let's go let's go to break. I think why don't we do this? <laughs> let's go to break. We'll come back and we'll spend maybe another 10 minutes talking because I think some people have some concerns and I think we could probably take maybe 10 more minutes to talk about this and then we'll move on to our next thing. Maybe 5. Maybe we'll do 5. <laughs> five oh, do we have 5 minute conversations about just yeah, about anything? You guys are going to have to cut me off on this whole landmark thing cuz I'm going to go <laughs> off a rant. <laughs> oh boy! Right. Oh, have your drink ready when we come back. Uh, do you want me to uh, announce this video, or would you like to? I can. I can. I'll do it. <laughs> um, Go for it. Uh, for those of you uh, who didn't get a chance to uh, watch uh, yesterday, uh, Chuina uh, is now married, uh, uh, or Chad. We'll call, I'll say Chad this time. Chad it, it married uh, Kelly. Yesterday, his fiance of uh, oh no, it's been a long time since college, I guess. Uh, well, and, when when I met him at SOB Live 2013, they were engaged. They so. were engaged, so it's been a while. Um, and uh, Chad, as you as you know, was a big part of uh, Evercast starting. Um, so this is a small uh, eight minute video of the the ceremony, uh, and I I know that he wanted everyone to be there and watch. Because uh, you were you all of us, including myself and everybody in chat, uh, he he felt that everybody should have been there because not only were us as his friends and you, the community, were a big part of his life. He wanted everyone to share that moment with him. So if you got if you didn't see it, here it is now, and I'm sure he'll love a tweet after you see the ceremony as a congratulations. So thank you guys. We'll see you in about eight minutes, and uh, I'll camp us out in five, four. Three, two, one.